your boy um, Z here getting ready to put in another day this is day four Seatbelt. Got the gear on here. Can't go without the seatbelt. Waiting for my rock pink to come up in here. But nah, man, it, this 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 month has been a beautiful month. We made a lot of headway. Just cranked back open my uh, four agreements. Like I say, four agreements. This is the discovery of self. I mean, we we going self. We going deep. We gonna dive deep into this thing. And keep in mind now, I'm I'm no psychologist or doctor, or nothing like that. I'm just just an average Joe that that this want that want to change certain portions of his life, just like you, just like some of you. It's an average Joe. I know sometimes we see people just doing it, just rocking it out. But we're going to go step by step. We're going to dig deep. It's all going to be a lot. Most of this is going to be inside game stuff. It's how I see the world. Everybody see the world a little bit different. Because in everybody, like I say, everybody sees their own world. And to them, whatever they think is true is true. And then to go against you know, what they've been believing for a long time, it's uh, it's almost like an insult. They're gonna fight it, you know, because it's all they know, and they let them let go of something that you thought was true, that you built a, a big foundation on it, built based your whole life around these rules, and find out that these rules are false, you know, implanted, you know, put there to control you, you know you. You have a certain level of freedom, but you still, you still, you still caught up, you know, like in the Matrix, right? I said we was going to talk about the Matrix. I love the Matrix. But, uh, you know, and we live in, you know, as long as we living out a, a certain amount of existence, then we fine. But I, you know, I'm that guy, I just, I see things happen and I, and I notice and I'm, I'm thinking, gosh, why did how did that happen? How how are they able to do that? And I've just been on this quest. It's been a long time. You boy Rob Z going on. I'm pretty old. I'm going, I'm gonna be 50. I am 50. You boy Rob Z is 50. And it's been going on a long, long time. And these next these next years, you know, I mean, because when you're growing up, you're all caught up inside the, the world's way of doing things and friends and family and living the life that the television has told you you should be living. You know, when you think about vacation, you know, I, I, where I live at, you think about vacation, you think about going to the beach. And I mentioned that to my my kids, I told them a, a funny story. <clears throat> I said, uh, talked to a customer and they had on some Mickey Mouse watches, gold Mickey Mouse watches. I said, man, y'all got matching Mickey Mouse watches? They said, yeah. They said, Mickey has been good to us. You know, I'm on a, a big wig down at Disney. I said, oh, okay then. I said, well, what you what you doing in, in, the, in the hood? That's what I asked him. You know, what you doing in the hood? And he said, uh, we got a vacation home in the hood. You know, and I thought that was funny, but it was like an epiphany, right? You'd be like, hmm. You know, my kids, you know, you grow up in the area, and my kids are always saying, you know, it's, it's nothing here, it's nothing here, nothing going on here, I need to go over there. But I told them that story, and they was like, what? I said, yeah. Because if you think about it, people that born and raised and live on the beach, they don't take their vacation on the beach. To them, vacation may be the hood. It may be the mountains. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes they want to go and go slow. So, you know, if you if you live in where it's so-called paradise, I bet you 
on their televisions in those places, these islands and stuff, or these resorts and stuff at, I wouldn't be shocked. I, if somebody lives there, and if you live in those places, I, I, I'd like to know what type of, uh, what type of uh, commercials they ran. You know, what did they publicize as far as, you know, vacation spots? Did you, since you're on the island, did they show you more mountain commercials? It's the mountains, the place to be. Cause like I say, where I live at, since there's no beach, that's all you see is the beach. Everybody think about the beach. You know, just like uh, I remember one time when we first got our house, and I said, yeah, I gotta get the deck on the back, get the backyard straightened out, get the grill out, and we're gonna grill and all. And I, I did that for a while, then I, I, you know, I came to the realization that that wasn't my dream. That dream was implanted because I really don't like smoked meat. I know, seems like I should, right? But I really don't like smoked meat. I like salads. I like vegetables. But I had to grill. And we did grill. But then we got to a point where we had three grills. And then we got rid of them. Now, my wife, she loves smoked meat. But I was just telling them that that was something that was planted. The things you think you like may be planning. We're just going to be looking and thinking and looking. Hey, do I really like that? Because we get a lot of uh, peer pressure. Now in this book, like I said, the book, The Four Agreements, Marie's is going to go through step by step. It's going to take you through a regression and, and teach you about your history. And then, then you're gonna, your eyes going to be open a little bit. It's going to be cracked. You know, it's just a little crack. We're just cracking this thing. Just to get a little glimpse. But only now, if your life is all together in all areas, you know, because like I said the other day, some people make money. They got a lot of money that they make and they're strong in that area, but it may be a small area that they're they're not strong in. They may be overweight. They may be missing a, their love life is not what they want it to be. Their, their kids are not what they want it to be. It can, it's always an area that they may want some improvement in. And they've been and it's been a tough challenge. And, and the reason is because we got some crazy rules set up. You know, I was, my daughter was wanting to wanting to move out. And uh she listened to uh Dave Ramsey and and Dave was telling her, you know, pay cash for a lot of stuff. So we're we're, we're pushing that. But she was wanting to go ahead and move out because she said, I'm a, I think I may get me an apartment. I said, look, what's going on? I said, because none of the guys you listen to as far as wealth management has told you to buy an apartment when you have the opportunity to get a house. And the statement she made uh, logically didn't make sense, and she knew it didn't make sense, but she couldn't get over the hump. She ain't got over the hump. I still got her four weeks to help her get over the hump but it's always a hump in that we don't know why we won't do something but it's a rule we made up and it's hard for us to break it she made a rule up that hey i'm gonna follow Dave ramsey no matter what i'm gonna put this 20 percent down and, and get me a house that's great but she thinking in her mind i don't have that 20 percent down and she, her mind is reasoned out that she should but she need to get out of the house and she should get an apartment. I said, but you're going to throw away 20 grand in an apartment while you're trying to save 20% to put down. Yeah, I know, I know. But I'm going to do it today. i got to do it the way Dave said do it. I said, but you're not doing it the way Dave said do it because Dave did not tell you to get an apartment. You know? You know what Dave said, and you don't want to tell. What did Dave say? Well, I don't matter. What. Yeah, he probably told you to stay at home with your parents until you save your money up. That's probably what he told you. But see, it's a little thing inside each one of us. We made a rule with ourselves, and in this four agreements, he'll show you what those rules are, expose them, and help us to replace those rules. But you'll have that little rule in you, and you know it's not right. But for some reason, you've latched on to it and you just got to gradually chip away at that rule. Keep exposing it because it's got roots. You keep exposing it 
like clearing the dirt off of it, see where how deep these roots go. It's like you know pulling the tree up, right? You're not strong just push a tree down, but if you can get all the roots and spoles and all the dirt off around it, all the support off them around it, you can just flip that tree over with your finger. But you know, I, I, I pointed that out. We'll go back to, to her again. I keep you abreast of that. But then I, you know, in my job, you know, I, I'm in sales. So I was talking to a, a client and uh, they were trying to, you know, make a move. And I told them at this time, you can't make that move. Man. And they started crying and stuff like that. And and I said, you know, here's the here's thing, you know, I know you probably think there's no way out, you know, but it is a way out, but she, but the deal is, is that she had not been, she hadn't been asking herself questions, the right questions, because nine times out of ten, I was telling her, I said, look, I mean, you still got your health, you're still smart. You still got, you know, uh, a house, you know, a roof over your head and and uh, transportation. You got a job. So you got all these things that all you have to do is to continue to cultivate those. And you out. But you just need a plan. You just need to ask yourself some hard questions. You just need to ask yourself, like, you know, hey, what can I do? I know I'm stuck. And we tend to tell us stuff, I can't do nothing, uh, there's nothing, no way for me to get out, I don't see nothing. You gotta change that language. And that start asking ourselves, what, when, where, how, who? Those are our questions. Y'all need to write that on a card. I don't know if you remember from the other day we had those questions that we're gonna ask ourselves continually, especially in the midnight hour. And especially early in the morning, I call him out. Maybe I should get it a name. My bathroom questionnaire. Why well, wake up in the middle of the night? And though that time in the middle of the night is when you're the closest to God. Because that body is asleep. The mind is asleep. And then you pull those questions out. You ask those questions. And you're able, you're more clear, more easier to hear the answers at that time. I don't know if I said that the other day, because you're the closest. Because the other, the other noise is gone. The noise of this world, the noise of life, the noise of your body, the noise of your thoughts, all that stuff is sleep. And so that's why that's the best time to ask yourself those questions, because then you're able to hear. able to hear. Like I said, I'm on the road out here trying to get it. This guy gonna speed up on me like he's going somewhere. Yeah, there need to be another lane anyway. I don't have any road rage, but that's where you're able to hear clearer if that makes any sense. So I want you to try it. You know, try it tonight. Because once you get get up, I mean, all the baggage back on you. All the noise is back on you. Everything is back on you. But that's it for today. It's your boy, Obzi, just thinking, you know, working through it. Like I said, I'm going to put this on the channel. Uh, hit the like button. Look for us on Instagram. We're going to be posting some nice, beautiful pictures on Instagram on how I see the life. And we're going to learn from life, too get smile. I'm going to tell you about my total eclipse story. I think you'll like it. I learned a very valuable lesson when the eclipse came. Alright, y'all take care. Do it to life before life do it to you. And we're going to do it to 2021. No doubt.